In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We take a moment to reflect on our sin and upon God's mercy. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation, he has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we commit to your mercy and forgiveness the year now ending, and commend to your blessing and love the times yet to come. In the new year, abide among us with your Holy Spirit, that we may always trust in the saving name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 30. For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest you shall be saved, in quietness and in trust shall be your strength. But you were unwilling, and you said, no, we will flee upon horses. 
therefore you shall flee away. And we will ride upon swift steeds, therefore your pursuers shall be swift. A thousand shall flee at the threat of one, at the threat of five you shall flee, till you are, until you are left like a flagstaff on the top of a mountain, like a, like a signal on a hill. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 8. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, with him, graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the twelfth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. We read together. Jesus said, Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning, and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, 
that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. In the name of Jesus, amen. Another year is ending, and it's a reminder that all of time is ending. The world is ending, and we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, and we must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Yes, the year is ending tonight. And the world is ending soon, and there will be a judgment. So how will the end go for you? The Bible says that at that judgment, the books will be opened. The books of every thought, every word, and every deed. Opened for all to see. The books will be opened of what was done and what was left undone. The books will be opened on where your heart was in any given moment of your lifetime. Did you love God with your whole heart? Did you love your neighbor as you love yourself? Or were you selfish? Were you ever at any time selfish in all your years here? Ever self-absorbed? Revelation prophesies. 
Then the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what each had done. So how's that going to go for you? When your whole life, when all of your years are laid bare and you are exposed for all to see, what do the books say about you? For depending on what is found there, a person might enter eternal life or they might be discarded like trash into the fire, the burn barrel. The judgment is whether to keep you or to throw you away, just like someone might be cleaning out their basement at this time of the year, going through old things. God is the judge, and it's his job to determine, is this one worthy? How about this one? How about that one? Is this one worthy to live on the new earth? You see, God is making a perfect, sinless, wonderful world, a world that will be without sin, will be without death, there will be no devil, and it will be paradise. But here's the question, (laughs) should he allow you in? If he allows sinful, selfish people into his paradise, it won't be paradise, not for very long. So God must make a tough call. He must judge. Do I allow this one in? Do I allow this one? Friends, this is the starting point for all biblical theology, that there is a judgment, and it's not looking good for you or for me, because we are all sinners. Do you think you could stand in such a judgment? I'll speak for myself. I cannot. I cannot bear the thought of having the books opened on me and having you all see what I really am. To have you see every thought, every thought I've ever thought, to have you see me in my most selfish moments, neglecting my duties as a father and as a husband and as a pastor, when my neighbor needed me, To see me bored at God's word or neglecting prayer. I mean, I'm fine rolling the highlights. (laughs) I'd love for you to see the highlights of my life. I'd love for you to see my best moments. There's been some good ones. There have been some fine moments. But judges don't care about a criminal's good moments. They care about the crimes committed. And it's terrifying to know that there will be a judgment and each will be judged according to what he's done. And here's the other thing. Most of the worst things I've actually forgotten. I think that's a coping mechanism in us. We want to think that we're good people. So when there's something extremely shameful, we bury it in our memory bank. And we pretend it's not even there. But when we hear that there's a judgment, those things start to rise to the surface. For we learn that there's an investigator investigating the cold case. And he has never missed a detail. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who can save me from this body of death? Jesus Christ. Yes, that's the only hope I have and the only hope that you have. You know, God the Father, He foresaw all of this. He foresaw how Judgment Day was going to go had He not intervened. So in love, in mercy, in kindness, The Father sent His Son. He gave His Son as a covenant for us, a promise that we might have hope. 
He sent his son as a sacrifice, as an atoning sacrifice, a cleansing sacrifice, a lamb to take away sins. Upon all the sins would be laid. That all of our sins might be placed on Christ instead and paid for and blotted out of the books. That the record of our sins might be deleted and lost that our sins might never be heard from again. You see, the Father foresaw your judgment. He knew exactly how that would go. And he did not want to condemn you. So he made a way. He has provided a way that you might be justified, that is, declared innocent in his courtroom, rather than condemned. And his plan is Jesus. The gift is Jesus. The angel says, name him Jesus, which means the Lord saves. For truly, he will save his people from their sins. (laughs) We need saved. Yes, this child born of Mary is your only hope of being spared at the judgment. There is a lot written in those books, and it's going to take a lot of ink to cross everything out. But here's what God did. He spilt a lot of ink on your page. He spilt the blood of his only son, canceling the record of debts that stood against you, blotting out every word, and thereby making peace by the blood of the cross. God has reconciled you to himself. He has acquitted you of the charges because someone else has already taken your place and paid the debt. Yes, another has volunteered willingly to take all your guilt and your shame and to pay your entire debt. And the one who volunteered was Jesus, and he's done it. You see, God desires not the death of the wicked. He doesn't want to condemn anyone. Not a single person. His desire is that all would turn in faith and repentance and live. So he has promised that everyone who believes has eternal life. He has made a promise that everyone who looks on the Son with faith might have eternal life and you will be raised up on the last day. And that is why Romans 8 begins with this beautiful sentence, one of the best sentences ever written. Romans 8, 1, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is now no condemnation. If you have the robe of his righteousness through baptism, if you've had your sins forgiven through faith, if you belong to Jesus, judgment day has already happened. It's already finished. You've already passed through judgment to life. For he's taken your guilt and shame on that cross. And your name is now written in a different book, the book of life, which is Jesus Christ. Your name is now written into his scars. Your name is written on his heart. You are one of his precious ones his saints, the ones that he purchased with his own blood. You are his, for you belong to him through faith. So now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No guilt, no shame, no punishment, no death. It's gone. When all looked hopeless, God found a way, and the way was Jesus. And so tonight we gather to thank God. And that's the lead-up to our epistle reading, which was the end of Romans 8. And here's what the end of the chapter says. Who then is going to bring a charge against one of God's elect? It is God who justifies us. That is, he has declared us innocent in Christ. Who is going to condemn The answer is no one. Here's what he's saying. You're going to step up for the judgment, 
And when God looks at the one set of books, the books that have the blood spilt all over your page, when he looks at the book of life, his son, and sees your name, when he sees your name uh, in that book, when he sees his own name on your forehead through baptism, when he sees that you are a temple of his Holy Spirit, and when he says, you are mine, and I love you, and with you I am well pleased, who is going to disagree with any of that? Who will dare contradict the judge? Romans says, no one. Case dismissed. It is God who justifies who is left to condemn. So then, if God is for you, who can bring a charge against you? If the Father loved you enough to create this plan of salvation, if the Father loved you enough to give His Son as an atoning sacrifice, if Jesus loved you enough to volunteer to pay the debt, who is going to be able to say anything bad against you at the judgment? No one. Not a single word. The Bible says that the devil will already be cast out of the courtroom. <laughs> His accusations will be silenced. He'll have already been judged himself. So he's gone. Anyone? Anyone else? Anyone else? Does anyone else see a reason why this one should not enter eternal life? No? Well, then come. Come inherit the kingdom prepared for you from before the foundation of the world. Come, you who are blessed by the Father. Come, you who are redeemed by Christ crucified. Come, drink the water of life free of charge. Come, eat his body, drink his blood for the forgiveness of your sins. For you have been counted worthy of eternal life. You are worthy in Christ. Your name is written in the book of life. Your name is engraved on the palms of his hands. Your name is written in his scars. So come. Come and receive comfort. Amen. We now stand and confess the Christian faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for your many blessings that you've bestowed on this congregation over many years. We thank you for every individual you've brought here. We thank you for our pastors and our teachers throughout the, throughout the many years. We thank you that you have always provided that the Word of God might be preached here and the sacrament given out rightly. And we ask that you would continue to work in this place by your Holy Spirit, that you would continue to bless these people and this community through your gifts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Father, we also thank you tonight for our nation and for the blessings you've given this nation over many years. Watch over us. Watch over our country, our state, our cities, and our communities. Let there be daily bread, enough to provide for our households. We pray for all those in authority and for all those who serve to protect us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for our homes and for our families and for the gifts that they are. We ask that you would bless all marriages, that husband and wife would love and honor each other. And we pray for all of our children and grandchildren, that you would continue to work faith in them through your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, be with the sick. Grant them healing. Grant them strength to face their trials. We pray for all those on our prayer list. We pray for all those we now name in our hearts. Father, we especially pray tonight for Jim Haggerty and Diane Griffin. Grant them healing, Lord, and keep their minds focused on you and the love you have for us in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for all those who mourn during these day, holy days. As many celebrate, there are others who cry, who weep. And we ask that you would comfort them with the message that your Son has come to give us eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, just one quick announcement uh, for communion tonight. Uh, we'll start over on this section, and we'll commune this whole section first, and then we'll move to the center aisle, and we'll commune this whole section, and then, and then you guys, and then we'll move over and save the best for last. All right. All right. We will now come forward for our offering. We stand for prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In the beginning you created all things by your word, and in the fullness of time your word became flesh and he dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Let your word made flesh dwell richly among us, that faithfully eating his body and drinking his blood, we may receive the fullness of grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Hear us now as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. It is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you, body and soul, till you reach life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.